hey, this is Lee. I want to do a video about my testimony of faith. And sharing a testimony is a very good thing. It's important, actually. And I wanted to share it with you. I was about 25 years old. And I had been partying for years. And I was a sinner. And there's no other way to put that. And, uh, well, one day it just hit my mind to, to stop partying. And I, I stopped, and this was, and I hadn't partied or anything for about a year. And then someone I care about, uh, they got sick and had to go to Mayo Clinic. And I went with with them to Mayo Clinic, and uh, she was going to have surgery. And... I was standing there with her, and you know how you are when you're worried about somebody that's sick. And uh, so I was sitting there, standing there by the bed, and two guys walked into the room and said to her, Would you like us to pray with you? Now, remember, I'm not a Christian, and believe me when I tell you that my heart was not right with God. And I was worried, confused, and aggravated. And I just was mixed up in my head. And I immediately said, no, she don't need your prayers. And she said, yes, please pray for me. And for some reason, it made me mad. And I stormed out of the room. I just walked out of the room. And I was walking down the hallway. And it was like my feet stuck to the floor. Or something just stopped me like I walked into a wall or something. And I stopped. And I, when I turned around and looked... They were bending over the bed, holding her hands and praying with her. And something hit me, and I said, when that preacher comes out of there, I'm going to kill him. And the strangest thing was, I meant it. And I think about that now, it just terrifies me. But I did. That's what hit my mind. And they prayed with her, and then I went back in the room, and I didn't say anything. And they took her to surgery, and everything, you know... I went and sat in the waiting room while she was in surgery. And when I right sitting right across from me was this preacher, this pastor. And I had just looked at him. I had hate in my heart for him. And I don't even know why now. But then I, I guess I, I just didn't like his faith. And I mean, I was mad. And I said, I'm going to kill this guy. And I can't believe I'm saying I thought that back then. But I did. And then a. Uh, they said she was out of surgery. I went back and everything was fine. I went back to the waiting room to find this preacher. I was going to throw him a beating. And that's what I had in my heart. And I can't even believe it, but I did. And he was gone. Poof, he just gone. So time went by. I took her home. And I got worse. A depression set in on me. And I started feeling under conviction about everything. I just felt terrible. One day, I had lived in a trailer. And I was sitting in the trailer by myself. And it was a sunny July or August day. And I felt this thing near to me that said, Go to the barn and hang yourself. And I just sent chills all over me. Scared me to death. And then a funny thought hit me. And... I just said out loud, it's too hot to die today. I'm not going to do that. And then it was gone. But it left me troubled. Well, people had been asking me to go to church, and, and I was just sick of hearing it. And I called my mom, and I talked to her, and all the, everything she wanted to talk about was Jesus, it seemed like. And it made me mad, and I just couldn't take it. And I just got away from everyone. And I said in my heart, I said, God... If you want me to be saved, if it's you, you talk to me, and I will. But I'm tired of everybody talking to me. Conviction. and Which means you should spend more time talking to your kids about Jesus. And uh, I said, if you'll talk to me, I will. And I, I said this, I don't know how long it was, weeks or months or what it was exactly. I can't remember now, but I just kept saying, I'm not listening to nobody. Well, th there was a revival that was happening a mile from my house on the next road. I lived in the country. And 
some people came over and asked me if I wanted to go to revival, and I just bit their head off. No, I don't want to go. I told you people, leave me alone. Well, I got so mad, I just walked out, got my lawnmower out of the barn, and I started mowing the grass. And while I was mowing the grass, I felt something happen with me. I, it was different. And the Lord said, I'm calling you. And it wasn't anything I heard in my ear. It was what I felt through my heart. And I thought about, I started thinking about my uncle that passed away, that he was a, a Christian. And my other uncle was a, a Sunday school teacher. And it was like, I just felt like I was in this place. And I don't know how to describe this other than a vision, but, and there was my uncle's Bible, Uncle Harold's Bible laying on the front pew. And, and I'm still mowing the grass, remember, but I looked down there and there was this, a Bible and the Lord, just like behind me said, I took him home. Now it's time for you to take his place. And whew, I'm back, I I'm, I'm, I'm look around and I'm thinking, what just happened to me? And the Lord said, it's now. Now's the time. I mean, tears started pouring. I might cry in this video. But the tears started pouring and I shut the mower off and left it sitting in the middle of the yard. And I went in the house and called my mom. And I said, Mom, I want to go to church tonight. And she said, you do? And I said, yeah. She said, I'll be up in a few minutes. And it's a half hour trip. And she made it in about 15 minutes. She was excited that I want me. I wanted to go to church. So I got in the shower and I got ready. And something had changed in me. And I got ready and I put some, I had a, a, I put a Harley shirt on. And that's all I had. And, and blue jeans and a, just tennis shoes that I had. And a whole carload of people seemed like come and got me i don't even know but i went over to this church and i did not feel like i fit in and i just felt weird but i knew that god was telling me that i needed to come here i just knew it and I, the satan right away got on them uh, and said you're already saved and i thought i felt like there was something not complete so that first feeling you get when you you have a thought of god doesn't mean that you're born again that means that you just broke your will to do it. And I went into church and I sat down and people shook my hand. And, and I sat there and they get up and sing. And it seemed like they sung a million songs. And it, Because I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the altar. And, but I, what I didn't know is I could have went any time. I just waited and waited and they kept on singing. And finally the preacher got up to preach. And they said, we're going to uh, change the service up a little bit. We're going to ask the evangelist to come and preach. And I was thinking, oh, I am so, thank you, God, for letting this man preach now. Because I knew after he preached, he'd give an altar call. I was raised in church. And everybody cleared in. It kind of got quiet. The man stepped up from behind the podium. And it was that preacher that I was going to kill in Minnesota. He was there a mile from my house. And I thought there's no way that I can't go to the altar now because if I go to the altar now he's just going to tell me he won't let me pray now this is what I had in my mind of course you know uh, an evangelist would never do that but he got up and he preached and he preached Jesus and him crucified and he literally laid the axe to the root of my tree and he chopped me down and I mean in a good way he was preaching about Jesus dying on a cross and rose the third day. He was teaching about how Jesus did this and this. And, and, and in my heart, my tears are pouring down my face the whole time. And I'm thinking, I just want to go to the altar. Just let me come to the altar. And he just kept preaching. And the last thing I remember him saying from behind the pulpit was, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. <coughs> and... Then he come out and give altar call, and he asked everybody to stand, and they started singing a song, and he walked out in the front of the aisle, and he started giving an invitation, and I don't know how to explain it to you exactly, but my hands gripped the back of the, the seat in front of me. I was right in the middle of the aisle, and I gripped it, 
and my knuckles were white and i mean i was holding on i don't know how i didn't leave my fingerprints in that wood and he gave an altar call and, and he said will you come and inside of me my heart i was saying i want to come so bad but i couldn't i couldn't let go of this pew and I was just a battle. I was in a war. And that's what we need to understand when people are, are trying to make the decision to be born again. It's a battle. And I, and I just kept, he just said, will you come? Will you come? And then he said, do you want to come? And I, I said, inside I was crying. I said, I, I want to come. But I said, God, if you'll help me let go of this pew, I'll go down there. But I can't let go of it. And as soon as I said that, my hands flew straight up in the air. And I just turned, and there were five or six or eight people between me and the aisle. And I never thought of, after that, that thing hit my head, my mind, I said, I'm going. And I started walking, and I was stepping on people's toes, and I was squishing my way out. And I got it. By then, I heard him say, just come and take my hand and turn and go back to your seat. And I, I just felt like I only took two steps down the aisle. And I'm, there I am in front of this man that I said that I would kill. And he reached his hand out to me and he said, Lee, do you need to pray? And he remembered me. I guess I left that good of an impression in him. And I said, I looked up in his eyes and I said, yeah, I think I better. And I'm just, tears are pouring. My shirt's wet. So he said, go ahead and pray, and I'll, I'll uh, be there in a minute to pray with you. And I went over and got down on my knees. And when I got down on my knees, I said, God, you spoke to me in, the, in my backyard. And you said, today is my time. But I don't know what to pray. I said, I've seemed like I've been so mean to everyone, and I'm sorry. And I need a best friend. Will you please come in my heart and be my best friend? And if you do, I'll be I'll serve you all the days of my life to the best of my ability. And it happened. Something happened. And I felt this thing go through my heart and I I didn't feel as good I, I didn't feel good like I felt in the yard. I felt better. Something changed. And then I my my tears from feeling sorry for my sins turned into tears of joy joy unspeakable and full of glory and he came over and prayed with me a few minutes I got up and he said he said turned me around and he said Lee did God save you and I said yes he did he sure did I mean I'm crying my eyes out and I said he did he saved me. He forgave me of my sins. He forgave me. And I was sitting there so astonished that because Satan had convinced me that my sins were greater, then God would forgive. And I was so confused and I didn't know what to do. And Then the, I was standing there and he said, everybody come and shake hands with our brother, new brother in Christ. And I felt like for the first time in my life, I belonged to something. My mom got so happy, she was jumping up and down. You know how old mothers are. Just saying, get a Kleenex. She was so excited. And they started to come up and, <clears throat> and hug me. And this little short lady, Molly Wright, came up to me. And people were hugging me. And she walked up to me. And she was about this tall to me, like right up to my chest. And she walked up to me. And she didn't shake my hand. I reached my hand out and she grabbed me right around the middle and she hugged me and I looked down and I could see her blue hair and then she looked up at me and she said Lee I love you and I said I didn't know who this lady was and I said well I love you too and something else hit me it was like another wave of love that hit me and I hugged everybody and, as soon, and everybody got done hugging me I'm getting excited and uh, I can't believe that God just saved me. And Willie said, well, Brother Lee, he called me brother this time. He said, do you have anything that you'd like to share or say? And I said, 
when can I be baptized? And he said, well, when do you want baptized? And I said, like now. And he said, and he said well, we can't do it now, but let's do it next Sunday. I said, okay, good enough. And that's, I went home, and I I walked around the house for a couple hours just crying. All I could do was cry. I was just so happy. And I, then I finally went to bed. I said my prayers for the first time since I was a little boy. And I fell right to sleep in a peace that I hadn't experienced for years. And then I woke up the next morning, and I walked out down the hallway walked out and I looked out the yard and there were birds in the yard like they are in the morning and the Lord spoke to my heart and said I feed the birds every morning and I started bawling I said why did I never see this before the grass was greener the sky was bluer and I had an understanding that I'd never had in my whole life I didn't even know existed and I felt love for the first time in my life I would knew I was loved. And that's my testimony. If you're out there and you're in, in this place where you're making a decision, make it. It's worth it. If you're a person that's already made this decision, stay on the right path because it's worth it. Because heaven's coming. That's my video I wanted to do. And that's I've went 16 minutes. I didn't mean to go this long, but I wanted to share this video with you. This is my living testimony. And when I'm gone and I leave this world, it'll be a testimony. I hope that people will come and watch and remember. Jesus loves you more than you can imagine. And if Satan tells you you've sinned too much, don't listen. Because he's there. And he wants to forgive you of your sin. And he will come in your heart. There's a, such a th there is a thing called a born-again experience. And that's how it happens. I love you. I hope you're praying for me. I'll be praying for you. And I truly love you with all my heart. That man that preached that night, his name was Willie Collins. And he doesn't go to church around here anymore. I don't even know what happened to him. I hope he's still alive. He may not be, but I, I don't know. But thank you, Willie. My brother. That's my video. I love you with all my heart. Forever. For no reason. Unconditionally. And I will never stop. Whoever you are watching this, I love you. Don't forget, stop back often, like, share, and subscribe. Hit, give me the thumbs up. That helps my videos push forward. And we'll be back real soon. <laughs> I just about could fly out of here now. I love you. Have a good day. Bye.